In honor of the 50th anniversary of the Star Trek franchise, we recently released a video showing you how to create a Star Trek transporter effect in HipFilm 4 Pro. This is the prequel to that video, where I will show you how to set up the scene in preparation for creating those effects. It's the less flashy and exciting half of the process, but it's still very important. You can download the project files from the link in the YouTube description, and we will get started. Energize. The simplest way to do this shot is with a locked off camera, like I did in the intro. If the camera isn't moving, it's very easy to shoot a clean background plate, remove the actor, add the effects, and be done. But it can be more interesting and exciting to add effects into a shot with a moving camera, and I wanted to address that more challenging situation. So here is the finished shot we will be creating. Note that the camera is moving during the effect, and we don't cut immediately afterward. Giving the actor a chance to interact with the scene a bit after the transport can make the effect more convincing. Our first step in a shot like this is to remove the actor. In this case, I'll be transporting into the scene, so I need to remove myself from the beginning of the shot. If I was transporting out of the scene, I would use the same process to remove myself from the end of the shot, so I disappear after being beamed up. There are two main areas that I'm obscuring. The big boulder I'm standing on, and the hill behind it. Because the camera is moving, the parallax between these areas means that they need to be replaced separately. However, we do have it a bit easy because our effects will quickly cover most of the area where our background replacement is present, helping to hide the seams of our background replacement. In order to replace those areas, we will need a clean plate of those areas, for which we will use this still plate image, which we shot at the same time we were getting our video. We can use masks to isolate those areas and cover the character, but in order to lock them in place as the camera moves around, we will need to perform some tracking. Open the control tree of the character layer and click the plus sign next to the tracks listing to create two new tracks. Guess which one I'm going to use to track the hill? Tough to tell, isn't it? Select each tracker and press F1 if you're on Windows or return on the Mac to rename them. Name one hill and the other rock. Now try and guess which one I will use to track the hill. Naming your layers, tracks, and other items in HitFilm logically as you work makes it much easier to find what you need later and quickly make changes. Logical and consistent naming should be considered a non-optional habit, like saving regularly and backing up everything. So, on with the tracking. Double-click the hill track to open its controls in the track panel. As the camera moves through this shot, it gets closer to the hill meaning the hill gets a bit larger in the frame. So we will use a double point track, which allows us to calculate rotation and scale of the tracked area by comparing the relative position of two separate features. Set the type to double points, then position the points onto two notable features on the hillside. You can zoom in on the viewer by using the scroll wheel on your mouse if you need to. I'm going to drop them on two rocks. Try not to position them too close together as more distance between the points will give more accurate rotation and scale information. Once they are in position, let's track forward. We don't need to track the entire shot. Really, we only need to replace this background for the very first bit. Once the actor starts to stand, we can stop the track, and we know we have more than enough frames tracked for what we need. Now, repeat the process for the rock track. Use two points, set them a good distance apart on the rock, on features with a lot of contrast. Then, let's track backwards to the start of the clip. The position of tracking point 1 is what will be used when we apply this tracking data. So position that one near the top of the rock and close to centered from left to right. From the New Layer menu, let's create two point layers to apply this tracking data to. Rename them to Hill Position and Rock Position. Then select our hill tracker once again, and in the layer field, select one of our point layers. I'll let you guess which one, and enable the rotation and scale options. Then click apply, and the tracking data is copied over to that point. Do the same for the rock tracker. Select the rock position point, 
enable rotation and scale, then apply. Let's trim the duration of these point layers to the area we tracked. It isn't necessary that we do this, but it gives us an easy visual representation of how many frames include tracking data. Switch back to the viewer now, and we can create our clean background plate. For this, we will use two copies of our still plate image. So, drag it to the timeline, then press Command D or Control D to duplicate it. Rename these copies to Rock Repair for the top one, and Hill Repair underneath. Make sure that Rock Repair is on top, so it will be in front of the hill, and then hide it. Select the Hill Repair layer, and reduce its opacity to around 50%, so we can align it with our footage. Make sure you're on the first frame, and use our tracked reference points to align the two. We will need to increase the scale of our image a touch, to around 106%, to get a decent alignment. We will now use a freehand mask to cut out the hillside. With the freehand mask tool, select our hill repair layer, then draw a mask around the actor. Leave a bit of space around me so we can feather the edges, but don't make the mask excessively large. We want to keep as much of the original footage as possible. When you get down to the rock, make sure to include the top of the rock in the mask, so this layer overlaps behind the rock repair layer we will set up next. With the mask completed, turn opacity of the layer back up. Then, open the mask shape controls, and adjust the mask feather strength to blend our repair into the footage. On the timeline, parent the hill repair layer to our hill position point, and it will lock nicely into place, significantly improving the shot by removing me from it. Now to repair the rock, we will use the same process on the rock repair layer. Enable the layer, reduce its opacity, and align our overlay with the top of the rock. On this layer, we need to follow the edges more closely, to give this rock a hard edge where it overlaps in front of the hill, so turn opacity back up to 100, so we can see the edges. Then, use the freehand mask, and draw around the top of the rock. We want to be fairly precise here, because the back edge of the rock doesn't allow for a lot of mask feathering. As we come around the front of the rock, Try to follow harder lines, so the harder edge of this mask isn't obvious. Click the first point again to close the mask shape, then adjust the alignment further if you need to. Parent this layer to the rock position point, and now we have proper parallax between the hill and the rock, giving the shot a much more natural look. Our repairs would blend in a bit better if the contrast matched the background though. So let's add a curves effect to the hill repair, and give it just a bit of an S-curve to boost the contrast. Once you are happy with it, right-click and copy the curves, and paste them onto the rock repair layer as well. I might also pull a bit of red out of the rock layer to get a better color match. Now, we need to isolate our person onto a separate layer. I was going to say actor, but I'm not. I'm horrible at acting, but I am a person, so let's stick with that. Being a person is within my skill set. The particle effects we create will be based on the shape of our person, and in order to wrap the particles around the person, he will need to be a separate layer from the background. Since a person doesn't move during molecular transport, we can use a still image for this. To create one, let's export a single frame from our video. Advance to just before the person starts moving, let's say 8 seconds, and export frame from the options menu of the viewer. Let's name it character plate, or person plate if you prefer, and export. Then, import that image back into the media panel, and add it to the timeline. Use a freehand mask to carefully follow the edges of the person, and extract them from the background. I'm speeding this process up to make it less boring. Once we have the mask completed, make sure the playhead is still on 8 seconds, and the masked person will align perfectly with our footage. Before we fade our character plate in, we will convert it to a composite shot. By embedding the mask into a composite shot, the mask shape will actually change the shape of the layer on our energized timeline. Right-click the character plate, and select Make Composite Shot. For the masks, select Move with Layer, and click OK. Now, to simplify the process of centering our particle effects on the character later on, adjust the anchor point of this layer, so that the character is centered in the frame. Note the specific values that we use. In fact, 
Right-click on the anchor point and copy those values. Switch back to our Energize timeline, and now the mask is embedded into our layer. To realign our character, make sure the playhead is at 8 seconds, which is the frame we use to create our plate, then right-click the position property and paste those values in. Simply copying the exact values is much quicker and more accurate than trying to eyeball the alignment. On this frame, parent the layer to our rock position so it stays in place as the camera moves. Now, we want to fade our background repair layers out, underneath the person. At 4 seconds, locate the opacity property and enable keyframing on it, for both the hill repair and rock repair layers. Advance to 5 seconds and set the opacity to 0, so these layers fade out, revealing our original background. Still on 5 seconds, enable keyframing for the opacity of the character plate, then step back to 4 seconds and set its opacity to 0. At this point, the character is beamed in at the same time our background repairs fade out, giving us a nice transition. When the character in the main footage starts moving, though, we need to have this character plate hidden. So find that point and trim the character plate to that frame, somewhere just after 8 seconds. If our cut is on the right spot, we won't even need to fade the end of this clip out, as the cut is invisible. At this point, our project is exactly the same as the project you can download with our Star Trek Transporter tutorial, which is part two of this tutorial series. Except it was released first, which I guess makes this part two. Anyway, if you haven't seen the other part yet, or if you just want to carry on through the rest of the process from here, then follow the link on screen to learn how to complete this shot using particle effects and light flares. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss any of our future HitFilm tutorials, and thanks for watching.